everybody welcome to or welcome back to my channel my name is Katie otherwise known as the vintage academic and I am a junior transfer student at UC Berkeley studying anthropology I make fun vlogs and informational videos about the transfer process life as a transfer student and some vintage clothing just to mix things up a bit and welcome to another vlog it is currently Tuesday December 8th I had an interesting plan for this week that I thought I would share with you guys. I wanted to try and switch things up for my weekly vlogs and so this week is going to have a theme. Starting yesterday, it is Dead Week at UC Berkeley, or Reading Review and Recitation Week as it is now known, it is a tradition at UC Berkeley where the week before finals week, quizzes, assignments, and class are not scheduled in order to give everybody time to study for their finals. As I'm sure you guys know if you've been watching my vlogs, this semester it's an online semester because of the pandemic and it's been really odd for me in terms of finals. I had two final projects, one of which I already turned in, and the other one I haven't had to do a lot of work on because it's a group project. So I don't really have any content to film for dead week or finals week. I thought what I would do instead, since this is an anthropology major channel and I love learning about culture and tradition and things that humans do, that I would take each day to explore a different UC Berkeley tradition, especially since I'm not on campus. I want to learn about the traditions that I would otherwise be participating in, but I still want to know about them. So I thought each day I would explore a different tradition and share it with you guys while going about my regular daily business. So I did a quick search about Dead Week and I thought I would share that information with you guys before moving on with the rest of my day. I hope you enjoy it and let's learn a little bit about Dead Week. So Dead Week started in 1961 when the students of UC Berkeley requested that the week before finals become known as Dead Week in order to, like I said already, have time to actually prepare for their finals. Now, if you guys know anything about UC Berkeley, it is famous for being very academically rigorous and I'm not surprised that people wanted to request extra time to study for finals. So during my research about Dead Week, I actually found that there is an interesting tradition within Dead Week, and it is called the Naked Run. And yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. Apparently, there is a day during Dead Week in which students participate in a streaking session through Moffitt Library. The students strip down to either their underwear or nothing at all and take a couple of laps around Moffitt Library in order to relieve stress. <laughs> the run, which supposedly lasts about 20 minutes, culminates in a crowd gathering gathering at the center of the library and cheering. What I found interesting about this tradition was the origin. UC Berkeley has a long-standing history of social activism, including nude activism. Apparently, this stems from a huge push in sexual liberation at the same time as the free speech movement. And since the 1960s, students have used nudity as a way of making statements on a variety of issues, from things like RAPE culture to apparently the clearing of trees. I found this really interesting because UC Berkeley is known for its social activism and it kind of brings together just a, a thing that students do in order to relieve stress during a very stressful time with that social activism aspect of UC Berkeley's culture. So that was what I learned about the traditions at UC Berkeley today. Really two traditions in one, Dead Week and then the Naked Run Through Moffat Library inside of Dead Week. I already knew about Dead Week because technically I am in Dead Week right now as a student. I had no idea about the Naked Run though and I think it is really Really fascinating and I appreciate you guys sitting here and listening to me talk about it for like 10 minutes straight. Now I have not actually planned out how this video is going to go so I will either see you guys as I continue vlogging the rest of the week or I will just make this into a sit down video where I talk about the various traditions that I have researched at UC Berkeley. But for now I'm gonna go and I will see you guys in a bit. Hello everybody and welcome back to day three of Dead Week, day two of my little research vlog. Today I'm going to research another UC Berkeley tradition. I have not decided which one yet. I'm going to go ahead and take you guys through the research process with me and we're going to go to the UC Berkeley traditions website and take a look and see what we can find. So the first place that I'm going is Traditions of Berkeley. It's just the page on UC Berkeley's website that has all of their traditions listed, or at least most of them. There is a whole list of things on here that I would love to go over, but I'm just going to focus on the ones that I think I can share realistically and interestingly in my video. So why don't we go ahead and look more at this one, the blue and gold. To look for more information, I just looked up UC Berkeley colors, and these were some of the results that popped up. Now, while this page is about brand guidelines, it gives some interesting information about why they use these colors. 
as well as on the University of California webpage, they talk about why they use these colors for the different schools. So while I talk to the camera a little bit about the meaning behind the colors, why don't I go ahead and roll some footage of me trying to incorporate blue and gold into my day. Now, as you guys probably know, I already own quite a few UC Berkeley things, UC Berkeley vintage things, and blue and gold has always been a part of my wardrobe. So I thought it'd be fun to put together a couple of outfits that reflect the blue and gold colors of UC Berkeley and the UC campuses right now. Now, I find the tradition of the blue and gold colors really interesting because it's it's tied to the origins of UC Berkeley. So UC Berkeley was founded in 1868, but it began in 1866 when the College of California, which was a private university founded by a Yale alumnus, Henry Durant, purchased land that comprised the current UC Berkeley campus. In conjunction with the state of California, they established an agricultural, mining, and mechanical arts college, which eventually came to be at UC Berkeley. The campus colors of blue and gold were chosen five years later in 1873, blue to represent the California sky, the Pacific Ocean as well as the Yale alumni student who helped to found UC Berkeley. And then gold to represent California, otherwise known as the Golden State. And an interesting fun fact, it was the women of the classes that suggested using both of the colors in order to represent the campus. On UC Berkeley's brand guidelines website, it says beyond our logo, color is the most recognizable aspect of our brand identity. Our brand colors reflect our bold, diverse community. Using color appropriately is one of the easiest way to make sure our materials reflect a cohesive Berkeley brand. And if you scroll down just a little bit on their brand guidelines webpage, they actually have the primary palettes listed and the colors are named after UC Berkeley things such as Berkeley Blue, Founders Rock, California Gold, and Medalist. In addition to UC Berkeley's statement on the brand guidelines webpage, I also thought that the University of California's website was interesting when it came to the brand guidelines. They say that color is a critical institutional identifier. Blue and gold, which is used by all 10 campuses, comprises the unifying brand element across the system. And I always wondered why all of the UC campuses used the blue and gold color palette, and now I know why. I suspect it also has something to do with the fact that UC Berkeley was the first UC campus, otherwise just known as University of California until they founded UCLA in 1919, which fun fact is also why UCLA is known as the Bruins. UC Berkeley's animal is the bear and a Bruin is a baby bear and therefore the second UC campus to ever be founded was the baby bears. So that is what I decided to look up today in terms of UC Berkeley traditions. I knew that the colors were blue and gold. I suspected that they had something to do with California Ocean and California Gold, but I did not know the whole backstory, so that's really interesting. And I also didn't know that UC Berkeley was founded by a Yale alumni. I also didn't know that it was the women of the classes that suggested using both of the colors in order to represent UC Berkeley. And I think that's one of my favorite things about UC Berkeley is that they were very swift in deciding to also admit women bringing equal and equitable education just a step further. I hope you guys found today's subject interesting. I did not think that exploring the campus colors would bring forth so much information, but that's what happens when you do research. It always takes you places you never expected. So I'm going to go ahead and get back to the rest of my day, and I will see you guys tomorrow for a new UC Berkeley tradition. Hello friends, it is now day three of Dead Week, and today I thought a fun thing to explore for UC Berkeley traditions would be the mascot of UC Berkeley. I have never heard the mascot's name said out loud, so I do not know how to pronounce it. It is either Oski Cat or Oski Cat. Feel free to tell me which one is correct in the comments, but I wanted to explore the origins of UC Berkeley's mascot, give a little bit of background information on it, and since this video is all about me trying to find ways to participate in UC Berkeley's traditions without being on campus because of the online semester, I thought it would be fun to dress up my cat like Oski Cat. Specifically, Little Bear, since Oski is a bear, and Little Bear is also a cat. Oski cat, Little Bear's a cat. I know that Oski cat wears a yellow cardigan with a blue C on it, so I went to Target and I bought a little kid's yellow t-shirt, and I'm going to paint a blue C on the background while the voiceover takes it away and explains the origins of the background. Then I'm going to go put this on my cat and laugh. <laughs> I thought it would be funny, and I know he's going to... Uh, probably hate it, so let's get started. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and sketch out and start painting the C, let the time lapse roll, and the voiceover take over.
voiceover takeover. Haha, ha, that's funny. So Oski the Bear goes back to 1895 when the Cal track and field team flew a blue banner with a golden bear in the center at a competition on the East Coast in order to recall the California golden bear flag, and the bear flag was later adopted in 1911. At the same time, Cal didn't have a mascot, so for whatever reason, they decided that there would be live bear cubs on the sideline at Cal football games. During this time, the Cal reading section could also be heard reciting the Oski yell. And, um, please forgive me if I am pronouncing this wrong. Oski wow wow, whiskey wee wee, oli mucky eye, oli berkeley eye, California wow. This yell became quite popular and was heard at nearly every Cal athletic event or rally. Because of the popularity of this yell, along with the realization that live bear cubs at football games probably wasn't the best idea, it was decided that there should be a more realistic mascot, and thus Oski made his first debut in 1941 at a freshman rally. To this day, he can be seen at many Cal athletic events, alumni events, and rallies. He is also often seen creating mischief around campus and bringing joy and smiles to Cal fans of all ages. Et voila! A poorly done Oski cat sweater. And if you look closely, you can see where I tried to write it, write his name, and then gave up. So let's put this on Little Bear. He definitely knows something is up because he tried to run away from me when I picked him up. You ready, little bear? What do you think? Do you like it? He says, I don't know about this, guys. You know the drill. We've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, what a handsome boy. <laughs> oh my god, it's still too small on him. I know. He's so big. <laughs> He's bigger than a 12-month-old baby, apparently. <laughs> Oh, look at what a good boy. You're so handsome. Isn't he so handsome? Look at what a good boy he is. He's my own little Oski cat. Are you okay, little bear? <laughs> For the record, he doesn't mind this. He's just a big, soft, cuddly boy and will let us do anything, so. You're not in any kind of distress, are you? Come here. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, goodbye. <laughs> Is he cute? Oh my god, look at how much it's stretching over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his little chest is poking out. Oh, you're such a good boy. Will you turn around? Good job. Should... Good job. Like oh, good boy. Can you sit pretty? Sit pretty, come on. <gasps> good job. He's a good boy. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make my own version of UC Berkeley's mascot and get on into the next UC Berkeley tradition. I love him so much. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to the last day of my exploration of Dead Week and other UC Berkeley traditions. I was going to do a full five days, five different traditions, but I felt like the rest of the traditions that I was exploring during my research were not things that I could make a whole day of exploration out of like I have with the other three. For anybody who's never done research before, this is actually something that happens quite frequently in research where you're you think it's gonna go one way, but then your research actually takes you another way. So just to kind of wrap up this video, I thought I would share with you guys some of the other traditions at UC Berkeley that I didn't think I could actually make an event out of, and I'm going to share them with you now. And just to be clear, this is not a comprehensive list of traditions at UC Berkeley, and I'm sure that there are a lot of traditions that aren't on this website that I've been using that I don't know about because I've never been on campus as a student. I'm sure that there are plenty of things that happen that are recognized as traditions that people get to partake in that you would only know about if you were on campus as a student. So if you yourself know of any or you're a Berkeley student who would like to share your experiences, leave them in the comments below because I would love to explore them. So one funny tradition is the sophomore lawn. The sophomore lawn is a piece of grass that's between the California Hall and the Valley Life Sciences buildings where sophomore men would historically gather to haze freshmen and then the freshmen would retaliate by burning their class letters into the grass. And it says here, these days it's a nice napping place. I thought that was kind of a funny way to describe it. Another interesting one is the 4.0 ball. It's a stone ball that stands in front of the Campanile and it has been there for more than a century. However, this tradition is new. When just a few years ago, students started referring to it as the 4.0 ball and rubbing it for good luck before an exam. Next is the Victory Cannon. The Victory Cannon was donated by the class of 1964 in time for the 1963 football season. The gun appears at all home games and is fired whenever somebody makes makes a touchdown, kicked a field goal, or won a game. And I know nothing about football, so I hope that makes sense to those of you who do know things about football. And then lastly, I want to share with you guys Founders Rock. 
when the trustees of the College of California, which is the college that would turn into UC Berkeley, were founding the school, they stood on a piece of land and declared that this is where the future university would be. This happened on April 16th, 1860, eight years before the school was actually founded. In that area was a rock where a memorial tablet was later installed in 1896. And I specifically want to bring this one because as an anthropology student, the anthropology department is very concerned with making sure that we always have a land acknowledgement. So just a quick definition, a land acknowledgement is a formal statement that recognizes and respects indigenous peoples as traditional stewards of this land and the enduring relationship that exists between indigenous peoples and their traditional territories. So the reason why I'm talking about this in terms of the Founders Rock at UC Berkeley is because the act of coming and claiming a space as your own to benefit white people is an act of colonialism, as is my participation in being on that campus and learning from that institution. So when I was exploring this tradition, I thought it would be pertinent to share UC Berkeley's land acknowledgement, to acknowledge the fact that UC Berkeley sits on unceded native territory, and to kind of have that dialogue here on my channel. Yeah. So let me read you UC Berkeley's land statement. Native American student development recognizes that UC Berkeley sits on the territory of Huichin, the ancestral and unceded land of the Chochenyo speaking Ohlone people and successors of the sovereign Verona Band of Alameda County. This land was and continues to be of great importance to the Muwekma Ohlone tribe and other familial descendants of the Verona Band. We recognize that every member of the Berkeley community has and continues to benefit from the use and occupation of this land since the institution's founding in 1868. Consistent with our values of community, inclusion, and diversity, we have a responsibility to acknowledge and make visible the university's relationship to Native peoples. As members of the Berkeley community, it is vitally important that we not only recognize the history of the land on which we stand, but also we recognize that the Muwekma Ohlone people are alive and flourishing members of the Berkeley and Broader Bay Area communities today. For further information and reading, I'm going to leave a link to this page in the description below, as well as a link to the Sagoriate Land Trust if you feel like donating. This is a land trust that is led by urban and indigenous women, and their purpose is to facilitate the return of indigenous land to indigenous peoples. And that concludes my exploration of UC Berkeley's traditions during Dead Week. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. It's been actually really interesting for me and honestly a little bit gratifying getting to actually explore some of the traditions. UC Berkeley is one of the oldest colleges in California, and, and it has centuries worth of traditions and cultural practices that I haven't gotten to be a part of yet. So I actually really enjoyed getting to do this, and I really look forward to the day when I can actually be on campus and participating in things like the big game rally and all that kind of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did. I hope you learned something new and if you did like it, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for future UC Berkeley and vintage related content. I am wishing everybody good luck, well wishes, good omens for finals week and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!